I have been traveling last week to meet with many old friends and former colleagues to get a pulse of their views on the market and their views on housing, stimulus, and the e-commerce competitive landscape. On housing, it turns out that I'm the most optimistic of the bunch. The people I talk to, which I must say represent current former high-level management at large companies, are quite sour on the overall prospects. To paraphrase one of them, they said that the purchases right now with 15% down or even less uh, are Joe Tai, which is leaks, which means that they're likely going to lose money on these purchases. They feel that with 1.4 billion Chinese and shrinking and already capacity for 1.8 billion um, for housing, it is currently ho housing at oversupply. Well, they agree that things will be better at the top cities, but even that is likely to change the location. For example, the outskirts of Shanghai versus the Shanghai within the middle ring will have different fortunes going down the line. That said, I also actually visited the property transaction office and it's definitely busier than before. There were a few people I spoke to were not real, um, real, real estate buyers and sellers. For example, an old gentleman was asking if he could buy and sell privately with the intention of transacting with his children to avoid inheritance tax down the line. The buyers there seem to be focused on the smaller units under 70 square meters or units around 200 million RMB or about 285,000. The reason, as you can guess, is probably is because of government subsidies under 70 square meters. Moreover, the low price signals younger families buying their first homes as more mature families tend to buy larger and more expensive units, like a friend of mine who recently bought a unit in the heart of Shanghai's Huangpu province or district. This is consistent with my expectation as most people regardless of wealth tend to be overly optimistic or pessimistic. We'll have to continue to examine the data, but especially under um, more and more stimulus plans. My expectation is that housing will enter a new normal where price will stabilize and move along with inflation. Otherwise, why would the government practically pitch the bubble and create this mess in the first place? All right, so on the housing uh, side, that, that's what I have. On the stimulus side, the government did not stop at stimulating property transactions. It's also encouraging homeowners, especially those that live in older homes that are likely built in the 1980s, 1990s uh, by the government, to consider re renovating their homes. For example, in Nanjing, where I was traveling to, they hired a person called Lao Wu. Now, I have no idea who he is, but uh, an older auntie said, Oh, Lao Wu's endorsing it. Perhaps there's something there. So it feels like there's definitely something going on and probably targeted to more older folks. And the reason behind this is to improve um, demand for renovations as a lot of construction workers that used to work in construction and building houses are no longer employed. They are working with the government to redeploy these resources and, uh, and personnel into renovations to, to help cope with tough times. And the amount of times I received this type of content during my short stay in Nanjing was impressively high. It was on the radio when, when, when I took the cab was on doing push I don't know how many times um, and with how likely the media set up in China is likely going to be on TV as well uh, which I don't really watch TV anymore so I can't comment on that uh, but according to an industry insider in the media landscape they said that they will help promote uh, government policy and government content to the masses um, on media platforms so it's definitely look like this is uh, why I'm getting so many of these um, content pushes um, to watch. So on my main industry insider, it was an interesting conversation at so many levels. For example, although not publicly stated, they claim that Douyin Commerce is number three in terms of GMV, being Alibaba and Pinduoduo. Moreover, they claim that they expect Pinduoduo to surpass Alibaba as the dominant platform in this coming year. And it's the strategy of low prices and competitors resonating much better than Alibaba's. More and more people I talked to, their only shops at Alibaba has begun to shift as well. But they did not stop there. They claimed that by 2026, Douyin will surpass Pinduoduo as the dominant e-commerce players. And that's really big ambitions. Now what further surprised me is the economics behind all this. It's crazy how much Douyin makes. For example, one merchant state that Selling a product on Douyin is like working for Douyin with for little um, or no profits. If you want to gain efficiency, you must first invest large sums of money to properly identify your cohorts at which your ROI will be much better. But even that, some um, says that it's not even that great. 
for example, the different merchants break down like this. Of $100 in sales, about $30 goes to the cost of the sold. About 30 is marketing fee. About 30 is fixed expenses like rent, employees, etc. With the last remaining 10% probably split between three to seven, where three is miscellaneous expenses and seven uh, is probably around the profits that they can expect. So it will spend more in marketing in the hopes that the money will be made in recurring revenue or be able to come back second time or being that the LTV on acquired users will be much better than uh, they assumed with a big portion of those fees and money going to Domic itself. Now, another Western favorite is JD, and I asked them about that as well, given 618. They say that it's, it, it is chaos internally right now. Uh, they have forgotten who they are. And this is twofold. Internally, Liu, the founder and CEO, has uh, promoted this Burley context, and I'll take it, of which I'll take it first, stay loyal, and together we will conquer the world. It goes something like this. In 2018, JD says we'll never let go of any brothers. In 2022, we owe our success to our brothers, and I've been thinking of what I can do for my brothers. In 2023, I will not lie down, giving up, and taking a KCS attitude. I hope my brothers will not as well. In 2024, the tone continues to worsen. Those that have not been delivering and fighting are not my brothers. Now, you can see this, these tone changes, that morale at JD is quite low, and so it says it's, it's chaos right now, and they're trying to do, to do things that seems right, but it's missing the point. So what is that mistake that they're making? And it's simply this. JD has gone from an e-commerce platform known for superior customer service and logistics to focus on everyday low prices, competing with Alibaba and Pinduoduo on Pinduoduo's home turf. I remember reading somewhere uh, where a customer wrote, JD, you have lost your roots. Your customers are not ones to nitpick and penny squinchers. squeezers. Sorry. You can, uh, we use you because you are fast. If there's an issues, I know customer service will take care of you. And I don't know what you're doing. And now they're competing on low prices. And all those low prices have come from somewhere. And usually involves subsidies of one form or another. Money has to come from somewhere. Someone has to pay for this free lunch. And it's putting a strain on their two key differentiators as the order goes up because um, there's so much more to deliver as well as more customer disputes coming up. So it's, in some sense, it's alienating its core customers because all the other services are being slowed down or are worse off than it was before. Now, from a business model perspective, it's also uh, bleak, right? They are using a higher cost model to serve the same customers. And who do you think will make more money or survive um, this type of uh, competitive environment? So just for some, um, I guess, perspective, if you're driving Uber and you're serving the same customer, would you, who do you think will make more money? Someone that uses a Honda Civic or someone that's driving a BMW? I'm guessing you all, like me, that's rational, will pick the Honda Civic uh, type driver, right? So uh, they're using a higher cost to serve the same customers at low prices, which is not their stronghold, and they'll be in worse off positions in the coming um, months and years. Now, uh, given that, I have some JD shares for, from a spinoff from Tencent a, a couple of years back, so I'll be looking to dump those on the market. Um, and maybe buy more Tencent or, or, or whatever it may be, but it seems that this is a very bearish sentiment with the competitive landscape where um, the competitors are actually gaining market share, JD isn't, uh, and probably going to be lost in, um, in, in, in so many ways. While I think there's going to be some negative aspects to PDD, um, and Alibaba, given Doing's rise and its continued rise. So definitely be entering space as competition heats up. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of All Things China. Uh, take care and hope to talk to you soon again.